so I've wanted one of these for a while actually, it's a bandsaw. And obviously I want it for doing lots of straight cuts in various materials. Now, I didn't buy this, it was actually a Christmas present from my wife to me, which I think is really, really awesome. I mean, she did ask my advice, because what my wife knows about bandsaws, you could probably write on the back of a stamp. So she asked me what I thought. Now obviously it's a budget model and I'm not going to spend an absolute fortune on something like this. I'm looking at a budget price for something that will do the job that I wanted to do within reason. So of course that means there's going to be compromises all down the road. But as long as you understand that a tool is a hobby tool and not a professional tool and you don't try to take it too far outside of what it can do, it's going to do you fine. And I tend to do that a lot when I'm looking at these kind of tools because I'm not going to use this every day, all day long. I need it for odd projects that we're doing and I certainly need it for the project we're working on at the moment. It'll get used for a project and then it won't be used for a while and then used for another project, that kind of thing. It's not going to be working all day long on massive timbers trying to build a replica of the Mary Rose. So as long as you approach it with that, then you're not going to have, uh, be disappointed. If you're expecting a professional thing and you're paying 150 quid, this was 149 pounds incidentally, which is about $200. If you're expecting something super professional for that price, well, your expectations are unrealistic. Now, the reason I went for this, it is a Lumberjack BS228 uh, and it's got a 9 inch cut in the blade. And the reason I went for it is because Lumberjack actually do make professional level tools. And this is supposed to be their hobbyist version of their professional tool. So instead of taking cheap stuff and building it into a hobby version, what they've done is cut down their professional version. So there's various things about this that are supposed to be really, really good. And I liked that about it. There was a budget price for hobby work made by a professional level to a tool manufacturer, and it seemed like a good deal to me. Now, obviously, I read the reviews before buying it, and the reviews were, on the whole, positive. There were a couple of little niggly things that people mentioned. There's supposed to be a light on this, and the light apparently fails. Uh, some people got bad deliveries, but on the whole, the reviews were positive. So I got a 4.8 out of 5 for the reviews. And what we're going to do, really, is just get out the box, set it up, and use it. So let's get it open and have a look inside the box. Box arrived in uh, reasonably good condition. I mean, it's got a couple of dings in it here uh, and around here where it was strapped up. I ordered it from Amazon. It came in a couple of days. And if we open that box up, it's packed actually quite well. There you got a tool catalogue. So that's going to make a little bit of happy reading later. We'll see what else we can beg for Christmas. And there's the uh, manual right there. Push stick. This looks like the table, it says here, if I can get it out. Yep, I can. Yes, and that's the adjustment table right there. Looks like a bit of cast aluminium that's got a nice finish on it. So it's got a reasonable solid weight to it, actually. Looks good. Um, that is a tilt mechanism. Now, that's actually really cool because that's obviously a geared tilt mechanism. Often what you have is just a, a loosened screw. You screw it and it's just a friction hold. But this apparently is geared. It's another one of the reasons I chose it because apparently the geared mechanism makes for greater accuracy and more reliability. That clearly is the guide. So there's the cut guide. Feels like a sturdy bit again. So it's a bit of box aluminium. It's got uh, plastic clips, release clip there. That's a bit of steel on there, so nice. There's a little mitre gauge that came with it. A bag of ubiquitous nuts. And then we'll take off the polystyrene. So that really was quite well packed. And there's the bad boy itself. Now, it's supposed to have its own vacuum cleaning, which is right there, but we might actually attach our vacuum modification to this. But let's get that out of its plastic bag and stand it up. So this is literally how it came out of the box, actually, with the blade already fitted. Now, it's quite a weighty thing. Uh, it's a 230-volt, 300-watt motor, so a reasonable motor, really. It's got a nice weight to it, so we should get some stability out of it, though I'm guessing you're better off uh, bolting it down to the bench 
And these are, are cast aluminium wheels, and one of the things are notable about this apparently is that it runs quieter than other band saws, which is great, so I'm looking forward to listening to that and trying to find out how that works. That's neat, a little brush there to dust off the dust that might collect, I quite like that. And here we have a um, emergency switch, this is for, clearly for the LED. The uh, gearing for the tilt table is on the other side, so let's close those and give you a quick view of them. There's the LED light right there, there's the gearing and lock lever for the tilt table. Uh, that looks like the adjustment for the wheel, so you can adjust it in and out for blade tracking. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure what some of this stuff does, like that for instance. Haven't got a clue, but I'm sure I'll find out sometime or other. But anyway, nice looking thing. Already quite impressed with it, to be honest. Now, all I've done is take it out of its plastic bag and its uh, polystyrene case. The polystyrene was sufficient that even though the box had a few dents in it, nothing had gone through on this and it's still got a very nice finish to it and it is a nicely finished piece of equipment actually no dings no breaks nothing on that which is really cool it's nice to know let's open the bag and see what we're supposed to do to actually finish setting it up but like i say it came with the blade already in it i don't know if that blade is tracking properly or not so we might have to do something on that tracking wheel but we can have a look but it came with the blade already fitted everything else you apparently have to fit yourself so Got a few tools here, and that apparently is the little hook for the push stick, neat. These look like the feet to me, we've got a couple of Allen keys and a pressed steel spanner to help us put things together if we need to. These look like a little selection of screws, probably for the feet. Takes me no time at all to lose things. Screws and washers. them to one side. This one is a little angle guard. Okay, it says in the manual, which I've just been having a look there, first things first, fit the feet. <coughs> turn it off if you like that. Okay, so that took all about five minutes to put the feet on. Here's the tilt table. I had a D-nut in there that I removed and you have to take off the lock handle and this little gear mechanism. The gear mechanism actually is a bit of nylon. That's a bit disappointing. It would have been nice if it was a bit of metal, obviously, because we're going to get excess wear on this lock mechanism. But then it's a budget machine, so you get what you pay for. Anyway, you just slide the table in there and replace the lock handle and the gear mechanism. Okay, so I put a level on that actually to make sure it was a level and then there's a little marker there. It comes twisted one way and when you've got it level, you unscrew that, point it to zero and screw it back in so you know where you're level. Uh, it comes with a couple of cute things actually. Ah, there we go. It's got a little <laughs> screw-in hook here. I, I quite like this actually, I thought it was quite thoughtful. It's a little screw-in hook there, and that's supposed to hang the push stick on. So we hang the push stick on there, and there's the fence guide. And the fence guide just slops in and clips, and it's got nice, actually it's quite firm, that is holding it quite firmly. So all in all, not a bad piece of kit. So let's get it plugged in and see what it actually runs like. Okay, that's it, plugged in. Ah, well, my light worked. <laughs> I did hear reports of people saying that the light didn't work, and... So people said they tried it a couple of times and it blew and it was a pain in the neck to get it mended. Uh, it actually works, but to be honest, I'm not that bothered because the workshop's really reasonably well lit. Let's press start. That's quiet. So I had a slow start. It's running really quite quietly. You see there's a little bit of vibration. So clearly it does need bolting down to a bench. Now all we're going to do for our test cuts actually is a bit of this builder's board. We're going to cut some strips off that, so that's all we're going to do. That's beautiful! <laughs> Now there are reports of, oh, sorry, there are reports of this uh, cutting through oak and teak 
Uh, soft woods, no problem at all. This is builder's board, it just whizzed through it, okay? So it's certainly going to do what I want to do with it. Uh, all in all, I think well worth the money. I mean, I'm, I remember it was a Christmas present for me, so I, I'm really pleased with it actually, and, and my wife is a wonder, and that's the wonder of her. A little bit of dust around, so we're gonna to have to do something about that. Put it on a vacuum cleaner. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.